Hi friends, welcome back to new session. So in the last two videos, uh, we had seen simple loop diagram of a DC generator and a simple loop diagram of a DC motor in uh, chapter number four, DC machines. Okay. Now in this session, I'm just going to start construction of DC machine. Before that, you please try to see guys. I think I already given an introduction uh, video uh, regarding uh, whatever uh, I just made videos uh, regarding syllabus. So introduction 2 if you see there I, I explained about uh, syllabus of synchronous machine and DC machine. See out of uh, transformers, induction machine, synchronous machine, DC machine, the uh, I can say the less time consuming subject is nothing but DC machines and questions from a dc machine uh, chapter also will be very easy for gate or for esc examinations also because it won't deal with any angles so questions will be very easy and see guys uh, especially questions all we are getting from a dc motor especially from a speed control of dc motor topic and uh, you are getting some questions uh, from uh, emf equation of dc generator nothing but e z equal to pi z n p by 60 a and we are, we are having dc for dc motor also back emf eb equal to pi z n p by 60 a so from that uh, uh, emf equation if you see we are going to have one relation uh, n proportional to eb by pi speed proportional to back emf by flux similarly we are having one more equation uh, in a DC motor torque proportional to flux into armature current. So maximum question you are getting, you are getting from this uh, equations only. So no problem. Uh, in future, I am just going to start those topics. See, uh, in this uh, session, I am just going to start a construction of DC machine. Uh, this, this topic is not that much important for uh, gate or it is not important for uh, ESC also. So suppose if they want to ask questions from construction of DC machine, so one more point of view, some theory questions they will be asking. Anyway, we have to complete the syllabus. Let me uh, complete the uh, construction of DC machine syllabus here. Uh, first of all, in this video, I am just going to start construction of DC machine. It will take uh, uh, some more videos for, uh, com for completing construction of DC machine. Okay. But you will getting, you'll be getting only uh, theory questions from this topic. Okay. So see guys, for that I have taken a uh, uh, DC machine diagram like this. I have taken four pole uh, DC uh, machine. See, so one pole, second, third pole, fourth pole. I have taken four pole DC machine, four pole DC machine, and I'm assuming, I'm assuming uh, 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 this pole, uh, this pole, I'm assuming as the north pole, south pole, north pole, south pole, north, south, north, south. And I already told in the previous two videos also in DC machine, you can take DC generator or DC motor. In DC machine, always you have to place armature winding on the rotor, field winding on the stator. Okay. So, you guys, in this diagram, these field poles or I can say field magnets are attached to this stator frame or yoke. This portion can be called as yoke. This outer portion can be called as a magnetic frame or yoke. So, this a field pole or I can say field magnet is attached to the uh, stator frame or yoke. So in this uh, field magnet, you are having a pole core will be there, pole shoe will be there, and a field winding will be there. Okay. So see guys, anyway, I'll explain now uh, one by one clearly. And this nothing but rotor portion. On this rotor, as I told you, we have to place armature winding. So in this uh, uh, rotor, so we are having first of all uh, here armature core is there. In that armature core, you have to provide some slots. So this nothing but slots. Okay. These are nothing but slots. So on this armature core, you have to provide some slots. In that slots, you have to place armature winding. This uh, circle, whatever I just drawn, this indicates armature winding. Okay, and I told you this is a field magnet. In this field magnet, you have a field uh, pole core is there, pole shoe is there, and a field winding is there, which we'll discuss later. And this is nothing but yoke, I said. Okay, and this is nothing but shaft. Okay. And please try to see guys, in this uh, portion armature core, as I told you, we are providing some slots. This outward portion can be called as teeth. Okay. And the, the inward portion can be called as a slot. Inward portion can be called as slot. In that slot only, we are placing armature uh, winding. See. So, don't confuse with armature winding and slot. Because we are having slot is there here. Slot. This is nothing but slot portion. In this slot, we are placing armature winding. Is it clear? Okay. 
and see here what I am assuming in this uh, figure I am assuming a uh, field poles field polarities I am assuming a north pole this uh, uh, I mean I am assuming this pole as north pole this pole as south pole north pole south pole okay and please tell me guys uh, let me ask one simple question see always flux lines will go from north pole surface it reaches south pole surface okay you please let me take this one so you know this is nothing but north pole surface means this is nothing but north pole surface north pole surface means this part this portion okay that means everybody knows that always flux lines starts from north pole surface that means it start from here it starts it, from north pole surface from north pole surface flux lines will start see please try to understand so from north pole surface flux lines will uh, start okay and to the south pole flux lines will uh, will enter into south pole surface okay so i'm asking a simple question suppose if i want by using right hand thumb roll so i already assumed it as a north pole and uh, for if it is north pole direction of flux lines will be like this this green color in right hand thumb roll please tell me so if i want direction of flux downwards direction of a flux downwards green color flux downwards thumb indicates direction of flux downwards and what might be the direction of current here it has to enter it has to leave see suppose if it is a pole here flux lens is downwards if i want flux lens downwards so here current has to enter here it has to leave okay that means here it has to enter and here it has to leave entering leaving cross means entering into the board dot means coming from the board then only flux lens will be downwards that's why i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm just taking a field current uh, here it has cross and dot is it clear yes first of all initially i am assuming this one is north pole so thereby flux lines will start from north pole surface so depending on the direction of thumb this is nothing but thumb direction downwards so i am assuming i am just uh, deciding direction of field current it is entering in in this portion it is entering in this portion it is leaving entering leaving entering leaving that means cross dot okay right similarly guys it is south south pole no? south pole means to that south pole surface flux lines will be coming that means this is the direction of uh, flux lines this thumb is the direction of flux lines thumb is the direction of flux lines so if you want thumb like this if you want direction of flux like this okay at south pole so tell me what might be the direction of uh, field current entering leaving yes or no entering leaving entering means cross leaving means dot that's why i'm just showing here cross dot if you want direction of flux like this by the right hand thumb rule direction of uh, field current should be entering leaving here cross here dot is it clear similarly tell me guys what about here is that the north pole suppose no i already told you from north pole flux lines will uh, uh, start okay if i want flux line should be upward means so what might be the direction of a field current entering leaving if it has to enter here it has to leave here then only direction of flux will be upwards entering leaving entering leaving okay direction of flux will be upwards therefore uh, that's why i'm getting here cross and dot similarly here south pole guys south pole means what i said flux lines will be coming towards a uh, south pole uh, surface if i want the direction of flux lines like this this thumb indicates direction of flux lines like this like this this thumb so right like this for that what might be the direction of field current it has to enter here it has to leave here entering leaving entering leaving entering means cross entering means into the board cross leaving from the board means dot here cross here dot okay what is the conclusion so if i assume north pole south pole north pole south pole for having direction of flux lines here like this here like this here like this here like this so direction of field current uh, at this pole should be cross and dot here uh, it should be dot and cross here dot and cross here dot and cross this is a conclusion is it clear next guys and tell me guys what is the property of what is our function of uh, i told let me explain step by step uh, in this video i'm just going to explain uh, about a pole sorry about a yoke or magnetic frame and a field magnet okay field magnet so in the uh, next video we'll be proceeding with the uh, construction of dc machine okay guys now tell me first of all let me discuss uh, i mean magnetic frame or yoke so I think I explained this parts, uh, these parts, it's a field uh, a magnet or uh, nothing but pole core, pole shoe, uh, it will be having one more field winding also, it comes under field magnet only and this is nothing but yoke or magnetic frame, this uh, slot portion if you see, it's a outward portion can be taken as teeth, 
inward portion can be taken as a slot in this slot we are placing armature winding and here is nothing but armature core and that armature core only we are providing some slots in that slots only we are providing a armature winding and this is what i can say base okay base which provides mechanical support for the entire machine okay now tell me guys first of all let me explain a magnetic frame or yoke very simple so first of all tell me yoke yoke is a let me discuss let me discuss about yoke yoke is made up of cast steel for large machine and cast iron for small machine cast steel for uh, large machine and cast iron for a uh, small machine if you observe you may get one doubt suppose if you see transformer core the transformer core is made up of uh, crg of silicon steel crg of silicon steel where permeability is more okay but here i am not going for crg of silicon steel to be frank a yoke is made up of uh, cast steel for large machine and cast iron for small machines sometimes there will be small machines if you take they are made they are made with the cast uh, uh, i said cast iron sometimes uh, they are uh, made up of a silicon sheet also but not crg of silicon sheet it's not crg of silicon sheet what is the reason guys very simple if you observe clearly if in transformer core in transformer core what is the uh, medium between primary winding secondary winding i mean through which uh, a core starts from primary winding it reaches a uh, secondary winding through transformer core transformer core is made up of magnetic material whose reluctance is less is it clear whose reluctance is uh, less therefore for increasing the permeability of the transformer core if i go for crg of silicon steel permeability increases you please try to refer the transformer core topic whatever i explained uh, in transformer videos now here so if you see guys between a uh, stator and rotor you having air gap is there so there is no I, i mean because of air gap air affords high reluctance so, there is no improvement in the permeability so i, I mean there is no need to use crg of silicon steel here if i use crg of silicon steel whose uh, um, flux density value is more it will be having more uh, hysteresis losses hysteresis losses which is not desirable okay you may get one doubt sir what about this transformer core there also uh, b max is more there also i'm saying uh, magnetic flux density value is more then why i'm going for uh, crg of silicon steel very simple though hysteresis loss are more okay if i use a uh, transformer core is made up of crg of silicon steel there if you observe clearly transformer i mean uh, size becomes uh, less and is and there is increase in the permeability there is improvement in the flux path from primary winding to secondary winding and requirement of imu current is less in transformer core i don't want to make you confuse please try to refer transformer uh, core uh, if i discuss transformer topic here you'll be having some confusion so simple thing yes in a dc machine yoke is made with a cast steel for large machine and cast iron for small machine it is not crg of silicon steel if i use crg of silicon steel so wh stress loss will increase unnecessarily which is not desirable okay next guys next let me ask one more question do you want any laminations for this yoke no first of all i already discussed once again in a transformer why we have to provide laminations laminations are provided to reduce eddy current losses to reduce eddy current losses eddy current losses concept will be there for ac not for dc if you observe clearly here so please let me uh, before explaining uh, uh, whether i need laminates or not so first of all let me complete this uh, flux lens path guys you know flux lens start from north pole surface it uh, reaches south pole surface it take return path like this like this okay this direction of flux and similarly from this north pole once again it is uh, it uh, from, it starts from north pole surface it reaches south pole surface okay and it returns it completes return path like this okay all right now guys let me ask one simple question it's very simple question i'm asking guys so see let us assume that under uh, north pole flux is a pi i am just taking so flux per pole i am just taking it as pi so under this north pole if you observe clearly two lines are just shown here two lines are just shown but if you see here portion of this yoke it carries only one uh, uh, one path only right it is, is i am having no, i am not having two paths here i am having only one path that means what 
So each portion of the yoke carries 50% of the flux only. If I take under north pole, total flux is pi, flux per pole is pi. So 50% of flux coming here, 50% of flux coming here. So I can write here, it's a pi by 2 and it is also pi by 2. Very simple. Similarly, let me complete for remaining portion also guys. From north pole, as I said, flux lines will start like this. It reaches south pole surface. It takes a turn path like this. It takes a turn path like this. Is it clear? Similarly, from this north pole, flux lines are going, okay, and uh, flux lines starts from north pole surface, it reaches south pole surface, it takes a turn path like this, like this, okay. Now, one second, please see. Suppose, once again, if you, if you observe earlier, under this north pole, let us assume that uh, our flux is uh, pi is there, pi is there. So, 50% 50% flux is coming here. So, I can take it as a few pi by 2. And remaining 50% of flux uh, taking path like this. Okay. Is it clear guys? Okay. Like that, please try to understand clearly. Here pi by 2, pi by 2, pi by 2, pi by 2. Okay. So, here one thing you have to understand. It's a very simple question I am asking. Okay. What is that? See guys. Under, what, under each pole, if you take flux as a pi, Okay, but uh, each portion of your magnetic frame or yoke carries 50% of your uh, flux only. So, why I am stressing this point means generally in future you are having one, uh, if you want me to write uh, generate EMA formula for uh, generator pi z n p by 60 a one formula is there. Here pi means average value of flux per pole, average value of flux per pole. This is a nomenclature for this pi. Suppose in uh, data, if they are given you average value flux per pole, everything is okay. That value you can substitute here and you will get answer. Okay. Suppose instead of giving average value flux per pole, if they give you, if they give you portion of the yoke, suppose some portion of the yoke carries uh, this much flux like they will give. Don't take that flux as pi. That flux is only pi by 2. Yoke flux means it is not pi, it is a pi by 2. That, that is the only thing I want to stress here. Okay. So, if they give you directly average value of flux per pole, you can directly take that value and substitute in pi. That is okay. Suppose instead of giving average value of flux per pole, if they give you, if they give you, I mean yoke flux, that yoke flux should be equal to what? Pi by 2, not pi. From that pi by 2, you have to find out pi and you have to substitute in this equation. That is very important. Okay. Please try to remember that. That is very important point I want to uh, stress here. Next, guys. Next. Now tell me. So, you tell me, I mean, uh, in a DC machine, we have to place field winding uh, on the stator and you have to place armature winding on the rotor. To that field winding, everybody knows that we have to give DC supply. So, what is the type of flux we are getting? Uh, DC flux. So, the DC flux only. So, the time invariant flux. Since time invariant flux is coming here, do you want any laminations for that? No. When we have to provide laminations to, re to reduce eddy current loss. So, when eddy current loss coming to be coming to picture for time variant of flux, I can say. Okay. But here there is no need to provide laminations for a yoke. I can say. This is the only this point. Laminations are not required. What is the reason? Since it carries a DC. Okay, and guys, one more thing. Can you please tell me yoke? What is the function of this yoke? It acts as you know protecting cover for entire machine. It acts as protecting cover for entire machine. This everybody knows that. That is also okay. Acts as protecting cover for entire machine. Next, very important. So it gives mechanical support for field pole. See, this yoke gives mechanical support for this field pose whatever i just attached the field pose this, I, mean, I, I just attached the field pose to the stator this yoke provides mechanical support to the field poles that you have to uh, remember and uh, this is very very important what i'm just going to discuss this point is very very important what is that see what is the function of yoke in examinations this is the question they are going to ask they may ask you okay what is that see whatever the flux you are uh, example if you take this one so from north pole surface flux is uh, uh, leaving it is entering south pole surface is coming like this and here yoke is made up of magnetic material okay and here air is there air is there air air having high reluctance whereas yoke is made up of magnetic material whose reluctance is low you know always flux passes through low reluctance so flux takes path through this uh, you know yoke 
so what is the function of yoke it provides return path for the flux it provides return path for the flux okay it provides return path for the flux i can say this is very very important provides return path for the magnetic flux and guys one more question i'm asking so number of magnetic uh, parallel paths is equal to what i'm asking i'm asking number of magnetic parallel paths magnetic parallel paths means you have to see uh, this green color uh, green color lines okay that means a uh, flux what is the magnetic uh, what is the number of magnetic parallel paths means you should see this one see one okay next uh, two next uh, three next uh, four these lines so in this uh, uh, figure we are getting four magnetic parallel paths here pi by two okay pi by two okay pi by two next uh, pi by two so tell me na na number of magnetic parallel paths in this figure we are getting four now tell me what is, what is the number of poles in this figure once again four therefore number of magnetic parallel paths is equal to number of poles that is that you, that you have to remember okay number of magnetic parallel paths equals to number of poles that is very important next this point I already explained each portion of the yoke carries 50% of the flux per pole. Okay, 50% of the flux per pole. Suppose if you take uh, under north pole, average value of flux per pole is pi. This portion carries 50 of pi by 2, and this portion uh, covers pi by 2. Okay, each portion of the yoke carries 50% of the flux per pole. Okay, right. This part, this uh, point also very important. This is about uh, magnetic frame, or I can say yoke. Now, let me explain about field magnet. Field magnet. See, guys. In this field magnet, you are having uh, three things are there. What is that? Pole core, pole core. In this pole core, only you have to provide some slots. In that slots, only you have to place a field winding and a pole shoe. Pole shoe means this portion. Pole shoe means this portion. This portion. This portion can be called as pole shoe. Pole shoe. Okay. This portion can be called as pole shoe. Pole shoe. Pole shoe. Okay. This portion. Okay. Pole shoe. This is what I can say pole and this is the pole shoe. Pole, pole shoe. This is the pole and this is the pole shoe. See this pole shoe is uh, connected to pole. Okay. I had, I had given clearly here. Pole shoe is attached to pole core by means of counter sunk screw. Okay. Counter sunk screw. So it's a one type of screw. So I can say this uh, pole shoe is connected to pole core. Is connected to pole core by means of uh, is a counter sunk screw okay and one more thing guys pole core in that pole core only i, I said uh, in that pole core only you have to provide some slots in that slots only you have to place field winding okay pole core and the pole shoe are made up of uh, what cast steel made up of a cast steel okay now let me ask a simple question do you want to provide any laminations for the pole core no why because very simple on the pole core everybody knows that uh, slots are there and in that slots we are pressing a field winding field winding carries dc supply i don't have any eddy current losses concept for uh, uh, dc supply therefore there is no need to provide lamination to reduce eddy current losses because it is carrying a dc supply right okay what tell me what about a uh, pole shoe whether i have to provide laminations for pole shoe yes or no tell me so no doubt pole core there is no need of laminations for pole core because it carries dc supply so let me finish just that point first of all pole laminations are not required for pole core since it carries dc supply and what about pole shoe i'm asking pole shoe means this one see guys very simple this pole shoe is nearer to armature core no is that about armature core because on this rotor, I mean, on this rotor, you are placing armature winding, nothing but armature core will be there. In that armature core slots, in that uh, slots, you are placing armature winding. So, pole shoe is nearer to armature core. In that armature core, we are having slots. In that slots, we are placing, uh, you know, armature winding, which carries AC. If you want, you can see, if you want, you can see here, last two videos, you can take DC generator or you can take DC motor always armature current is a uh, ac only if you want you can check so always armature winding carries a uh, ac supply since uh, it the pole shoe is nearer to armature core armature core deals with the ac supply there are chances of uh, having eddy current losses in this pole shoe therefore pole shoe should be laminated 
So I already discussed about this lamination topic in a transformer core. There is no need to spend once again time here. So how we have to provide laminations. So between layers of laminations, we have to provide some insulating material. All those things I explained in a transformer core. Those uh, who did not uh, watch transformers videos, you can watch that video. So there I clearly explained transformer core is total core is driven a number of layers of laminations separated by insulating materials like red oxide. Okay. Japan clay, I, I told you, red oxide, China clay, Japan varnish, red, red oxide, or oh, like the so many insert meters are there. I just provide between layers of laminations so that uh, uh, ultimately, if you see area, there is restriction in the area for the flow of eddy currents, area reduces, okay, resistance uh, increases, resistivity increases, conductivity reduces, eddy current losses reduces. You may be having some confusion. Please try to refer that video. You will be having some clarity. Okay. So, I will explain. So, only one thing I want to uh, say here. By providing laminations, we can reduce eddy current losses. That is it. Okay. So, here, yes, since the pulse is nearer to armature core which carries AC supply, there are chances of getting eddy current losses in the pole shoe. Therefore, you have to provide laminations for the pole shoe. That is the point I had, I had given here. Pole shoe should be laminated to reduce eddy current losses. What is the reason? Eddy current loss means double E. Since it is nearer to armature core which carries AC. Which carries AC. So, armature core carries AC and this pole shoe is nearer to armature core. There are chance of getting eddy current losses. So, you have to provide laminations for that. Okay. Next guys. And one more thing you please try to understand here. So, generally if you see this formula E is equal to pi Z N P by 60 A. Okay. This is a generated EMF formula for generator uh, for I can say for DC generator. This is a formula for DC generator. Okay. And uh, suppose for motor guys back in my formula E B equal to pi Z N P by 60 A. Same formula once again you will get. And here one more formula. Uh, let me explain. Tar pro electrometer proportion to pi into I A one uh, relation is there for us in uh, DC motor. Okay. Anyway we will discuss this in future. Okay. So if average value of flux is more generated EMF will be more. Okay, if average value of flux is more, electromagnetic torque will be more. Is it clear? That means always we need more amount of, I mean more amount of average value of flux per pole. Okay, so that means the, uh, the if you see pole shoe, so pole shoe provides, I mean uh, if you see a flux, what is the formula for flux? Ma? Flux is equal to MMF by reluctance. Reluctance, let me show with the uh, Yes, I can say yes. Reluctance formula L by A mu naught mu R formula is there. Okay. Suppose you tell me guys, if you want more amount of flux here, reluctance should be less, no? Okay, reluctance should be less. If I want low reluctance here, cross section area should be more, no? Yes or no? Cross section area should be more, then our reluctance will be less. Whenever reluctance is less, flux will be more, then EMF easy will be more, torque will be more. So, then tell me how we are able to reduce reluctance, I am asking. How can you reduce reluctance? Very simple. I can reduce reluctance by increasing cross-section area. That means if you see this uh, uh, pole, pole shoe, if you see pole shoe, I will be using here broader pole shoes like this. See, I will be using broader pole shoes broader pulses like this broader pulses whenever you, I, you, i'll be using broader pole shoes broader pole shoes okay so cross section area of the pole shoe increases whenever cross section area increases the reluctance for the flux will uh, reduce whenever reluctance reduces what will happen to flux value increases simple thing that i just wrote here pole shoe reduces Magnetic reluctance due to enlarged area of cross section. Whenever uh, and if I use uh, enlarged area of cross section, so obviously reluctance uh, whenever cross section area increases, reluctance will be less, flux will be more. Whenever uh, average value of flux is more, EMF will be more, torque also will be more. Yes or no? This is the explanation for that. Okay, I had given this. Uh, I had, I just used this equation. 
so that we can explain like this okay next guys next please i'm just giving uh, as a note only one second there is no need to repeat you please try to refer on topic which i told in synchronous machine i told in a synchronous machine flux distribution in air gap one topic i told you please try to refer that okay flux distribution in air gap one topic i told in synchronous machine please to try to refer that topic there i told so you if you, uh, we are having two types of poles okay chamfered poles and a non chamfered poles chamfered poles means i am just saying very slow please try to refer that topic then it will be very easy for you okay chamfered poles means area under pole shoe will be minimum and area increases if you are going towards a pole ends see suppose if you use like this okay okay if you want i can show like this also okay see guys see under poles along pole center air gap is minimum and if you are going towards pole ends area increases along pole center area gap is minimum if you are going towards pole ends it is area is increases this is what i can say i, mean, I can say chamfered poles non chamfered poles means air gap will be uniform like this see so if you see this one from here to here how much air gap is there here almost all same air gap same air gap same air gap is it clear guys therefore what is the difference between chamfered poles and non chamfered poles so chamfered poles means along pole center air gap is minimum and air gap increases if you are going towards pole ends air gap increases if you are going towards pole ends if you take non chamfered poles okay for non chamfered poles air gap will be uniform okay so i clearly explained in synchronous machine for chamfered poles flux distribution air gap is sinusoidal wave form for uh, non chamfered poles flux distribution air gap is flat topped or trapezoidal wave form if you compare a uh, uh, sinusoidal wave form on that trapezoidal wave form average value will be more for flat top or trapezoidal wave form that means if i want more amount of uh, flux in a dc machine so tell me which type of wave form you want flat top or trapezoidal wave form you want if you want flat top or trapezoidal wave form tell me which type of poles i have to use we have to use a non chamfered poles non chamfered poles okay non chamfered poles i have to use okay or one more name is there for this poles uh, arcing poles i can say arcing poles i have to use arcing poles okay so this is the uh, poles we are using here non chamfered poles i will be using here so because of using non chamfered poles so distribution of uh, flux density will be what i am saying flat top or uh, trapezoidal wave form so that average value of flux increases emf will be more torque also will be more okay so there is no need to bother about harmonics in a dc machine okay we have to bother about dc i mean we have to bother about uh, harmonics in a synchronous machine and i can say transformer not in a dc machine okay therefore you have to use non chamfered poles only we should not use chamfered poles in a dc machine okay so that is the only thing i had give, i given here non chamfered poles are used in dc machine non chamfered poles are used in dc machine i request you once again please try to refer flux distribution air gap there i told difference between chamfered poles and non chamfered poles i had given clearly definition also for chamfered poles and non chamfered poles and i had given a uh, flux distribution uh, wave form shape for chamfered and i had given for non chamfered non chamfered uh, poles also i had given a uh, flux distribution air gap wave form okay so which type of poles we have to use in a dc machine tell me non chamfered poles so from by because of using this type of poles we will be getting a, a flat topped a trapezoidal a trapezoidal wave form will get where average value of flux will be more emf value will be more okay next guys this is about a uh, pole core and a pole shoe so in the next video i'll be discussing uh, about the field winding before that you please try to see this small thing here so pause my
one second guys once again i'm asking you so tell me what is the deflation uh, deflation i had given for you for pole pitch once again i had given this deflation in a uh, synchronous machine you please try to refer on topic terms belongs to armature winding one topic is there terms belong to armature winding one topic is there in synchronous machine there i had given deflation for uh, pole pitch pole pitch means what distance between two identical points like this see if you take under north pole if you take uh, this is the this is the point you are going to take okay under north pole if you take this point so under south pole you should take same point distance between two identical points from from this point to this point distance between two identical points of two consecutive poles is called pole pitch from here to here this is what i can say pole pitch similarly from uh, here to here pole pitch from here to here pole pitch from here to here pole pitch okay don't see this figure once again please try to refer synchronous machine there had given deflection for pole pitch okay so distance between two identical points of of two consecutive poles is called pole pitch i had given formula also for pole pitch pole pitch equals to i told 180 degrees electrical pole pitch equals to slots per pole also i told slots per pole slots per pole okay so please try to remember pole pitch equals 180 electrical pole pitch equals slots per pole okay and guys here i am asking you now pole pitch means generally so the angular angular distance like the angular uh, portion made by pole pitch pole pitch was what angular portion made by pole at center is called pole pitch or i can say slots per pole simply slots per pole okay this is actually i mean now uh, i can say ideally the angular portion covered by pole at the center is called pole pitch but practically so this and i mean pole cannot cover this entire distance pole cover only this distance see this portion only it covers this portion that a practical angular portion made by pole at the center is called pole arc okay ideally so angular portion made by pole at the center is called pole pitch by seeing the diagram you can understand clearly among pole arc and pole pitch uh, which value is more pole pitch value is more whereas pole arc value is less very simple here yeah? if you see here this is nothing but i can say pole arc pole arc this distance okay this this is the only angular portion made by pole practically but uh, i'm saying it's identical i mean but uh, if you see uh, ideally so this is the angular uh, portion made by pole at the center so among pole pitch and pole arc pole pitch value is more pole arc value is less so this this value you have to remember pole arc by pole pitch i told pole pitch value is more so obviously this uh, value will be less than 1 pole arc by pole pitch equal to 0.7 to 0.8 okay see guys so next video i'll be discussing field winding and remaining we are having some portions armature core you know commutator brushes remaining things i'll be i'll be discussing in the next video okay so what is the conclusion guys in this uh, uh, in this video so this this is not that much important for gate and esc maybe for gate and esc they'll be asking some uh, a theoretical point of view they may ask on some questions so among only i can say so please try to remember some points which are important for examination what is that yoke provides return path for the magnetic flux that is the one first point and each portion of the yoke carries 50% of the i mean flux per pole that is the second point number of magnetic parallel lines is equals to number of poles okay that is the next point okay so some some points are only important and uh, we don't want any laminations for the yoke similarly if you take a pole core there is no need to provide laminations pole shoe should be laminated because it is neither to armature core which carries ac supply there are chance of getting eddy current losses okay and a pole arc by pole pitch is equals 0.7 to 0.8 now tell me we have to use which type of poles in a dc machine so non chamfered poles i had to use okay non chamfered poles thereby average value of flux will be average value of flux per pole will be more emf will be more torque will be more okay thank you in the next video we will be discussing the remaining things okay thank you